Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Giant Robot and today we will be playing Kerbal Space Program. I'm pretty new to the game but I have played a little bit before and we'll be doing a test run here today sending our ship here to the moon to try out some different things as far as making these videos go as we're considering making a Kerbal Space Program series for the channel. Our ship is called the Crash Bandicoot and it is a four stage plan as far as getting to the moon. It is piloted by our good friend here, Jebediah, and as you can tell, he's very excited to get on his way. Now the Crash Bandicoot, or the CB4 as I like to call it, is a four-stage plan as far as getting the final capsule and Jebediah to the moon and back to Kerbin in one piece. Stage 1 is the liftoff stage, and it basically involves gaining enough momentum to leave Kerbin's atmosphere. The main challenge here is having a, an optimal thrust to weight ratio to push past the thicker part of the planet's atmosphere. You need to have enough thrust to push your ship through the initial pull of Kerbin's gravity. We'll go over thrust to weight ratio more here in a little bit and we'll talk about the individual thrust to weight ratio of different parts and different segments of this ship in particular. Now stage two is a transition stage. The primary objective of this stage is to help the ship do its gravity turn and help reach a height of 100,000 meters and begin orbital circularization. Now, 100,000 meters isn't the specific height needed to do orbital circularization. I believe it's around 88,000 or 90,000, but 100,000 meters is just a, a smoother, more even number that I like to go by. Now stage 3 is going to be our orbital stage which involves finishing the orbital circularization and injecting the ship into the moon's orbit from the, the gravitational pull of the planet Kerbin. Its primary job is to take the individual main capsule and Jebediah from the atmosphere in the orbit of Kerbin and deliver it to the orbit of the moon. Now stage 4 is going to be the rendezvous stage where we're trying to stabilize the ship in the moon's orbit, obtain a proper orbit, and then land on the moon. Jebediah will be able to get out and do some scientific experiments involving dancing or whatever he does on the moon, and then he's going to make his way back to the planet Kerbin, and hopefully he'll be able to land somewhere safely in the ocean with his parachute capsule. Now let's talk a little bit now about thrust to weight ratio. Basically, thrust to weight ratio and our discussion here in particular is going to be based upon leaving Earth's atmosphere. There is a lot of thrust to weight ratio uh, equations that go along with your ship in space or your ship lifting off off the moon or any other planet for that instance but I haven't even gotten that far to even look into those type of things so basically we're just going to be concerned with getting our ship off of Kerbin. Now finding and dealing with the thrust to weight ratio is extremely easy in fact very basic math and if I can do it I guarantee that you can do it as well. You start by taking the mass of your ship and you multiply it by Kerbin's gravity which is 9.87. This will give you the weight of your ship or whatever object you're looking for the ratio for. Next you add up the estimated max power of all your engines and you take that total and you divide it by the weight of your ship. This will give you your thrust to weight ratio that you're looking for. An optimal thrust to weight ratio is 1.7. I'm sure there's some numbers after that, but we're not going to get too specific. Any number under 1.7 is too heavy and will have serious trouble lifting off out of Kerbin's atmosphere. Anything above 1.7 is actually too light and you might want to consider adding some more weight or any other components that you left out initially, such as additional fuel or any other stages. Now the CB4 has a thrust to weight ratio of 1.94. It's a little light, but that's alright because the second stage doesn't have the initial power it needs to finish pushing through the atmosphere, so the additional speed carries over into stage 2. Now the ship has a mass of 145. If you multiply that by Kerbin's gravity, you get a weight of 1422.45. We take the estimated max power of the engines with 2,770 and we divide the weight which gives us our thrust of 1.94.
this extra boost of speed is going to give us the power that we need to make it through the initial loss of the stage 1 components. Typically, you'd like to maintain a speed of 150 to 200 meters per second before you leave the initial atmosphere. This way you're not kind of overthrusting and wasting any of your fuel. Once you break the atmosphere at about 10,000 meters, you'll be able to fully thrust and then put all engines at max power. This is about the time that you're going to want to start your gravity turn as well. After you break the 10,000 meter mark, you're going to want to start tilting your ship over to the 45 degree angle. You're going to want to do this slowly, trying to maintain your projectile path in the same reticle of your actual thrusting, so this way you get the most bang for your buck. Now, due to the weight and the thrust capacity of the second and third stages of my ship, I didn't gravity turn as much as I should have. Now I tried to maintain a little bit more of an upward angle because to get the, the push and the, the height that I needed because I really needed to make sure that I hit that 100,000 meter mark. Now where I failed at this is I didn't angle my ship enough. I know I, know I wanted it to limit a little bit but I just limited it too much. I didn't get the horizontal distance that I would have liked to get as I was leaving the atmosphere. It would have made my orbital circularization a lot easier and a lot less fuel would have been used in the process so in hindsight you know I should have angled my ship a lot more but it is what it is so at this point we're just kinda cruising along hoping to achieve a hundred thousand meters in height above the surface of the planet right now our good friend Jebediah is kinda looking out the window and admiring the scenery that he sees preparing himself to begin his orbital circularization. So I'm going to go in here into the world view and take a look at our trajectory. Looking pretty good. Now right before 100,000 meters we're going to want to kill all thrust on the engine so that we land right about where we want to. So I'm going to go over here, hit X. Should leave us right about the 100,000 meter mark, a little bit over, but well enough. As you see here, like I was talking about, if I would have angled my ship a little better during the gravity turn, the horizontal distance on that trajectory path would be a little bit more in my favor. It would have been a lot more fuel efficient when I thrusted at the apoapsis here in a little bit, but either way, we made mistakes and we're going to learn from them and we'll remember that next time. We're going to thrust forward here at the apoapsis, try to lay out this maneuver node here to get an idea of what we're going to be doing, trying to make sure that both sides are about as even as we can get. Now once we've positioned our maneuver node to a location that we find adequate, we're going to begin to rotate our ship to the location needed to make this move. So activating our RCS, we're going to go ahead and turn our ship to point the way we want it to. The blue marker there is going to be the maneuver node's estimated location. So we're going to go ahead and line our ship up with that. And we're going to get ready for this maneuver. We're getting a little bit of wobbling back and forth and the maneuver is here. So we're going to go ahead and thrust engines despite the fact that we're not exactly aligned, but it'll be okay. So now with the engines on, we begin to circularize our orbit. We use the last bit of fuel on our stage 2 and we're going to transition here to stage 3 in a second, releasing the last components. Get rid of some of this weight here. The engine dies and we go ahead and release that. And we're going to fire on the engines of stage 3. And if you remember, stage 3's main job is those three rockets there are to deliver the middle rocket to the moon's orbit. As you see, we're trying to maintain to be directly on top of the apoapsis at all points and times for max efficiency. And we're going to keep thrusting ahead. Now if I would have gravity turned a little better and I would have had a little bit more fuel, I would have maintained that last stage a little bit more and I would have got a much better circularization and it would have been much easier and I wouldn't have had to use as much fuel as I did here in stage 3. So I did kind of waste a little bit of fuel here in stage 3 due to that failed gravity turn. So as you see that, that one failed little gravity turn can have a huge impact as far as what your ship is capable of. So we're going to go in here and we see that our 
periapsis is a little too small on the other side so we're going to thrust a little more in hopes of raising that but this is where I make another mistake in wasting a lot of fuel on this stage. I thrust too much, I overcompensate, I thought I was going to need a little bit more thrust and I simply didn't need that much and we end up setting the apoapsis on the other side to 300,000 meters so we did waste a good bit of fuel between the failed gravity turn and that maneuver right there so we should have enough fuel still to carry our initial capsule all the way over to the moon and it should be able to have enough fuel to carry its way back so i'd like to thank everyone for checking out this episode i'd like to ev ask everyone to like and subscribe if they enjoy this and if they'd be looking forward to future episodes please comment in the comment section and we'd like to thank everyone again i'm giant robot thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time